Hey, 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 welcome back. My name is Ryan Olson with White Bone Creations. This one is littered with nature's prairie rice, the wiggling prairie rice. This was an old bull that just wandered off and actually died. We recovered it and the uh, landowner would like to preserve his skull. He has a long relationship with this piece of beef. I'm wearing a dirty old shirt and gloves because this one is going to reek and pretty good chance everything I'm wearing is going to go right in the trash. So you're going to see what I'm going to see for the very first time. I This thing's been in a bag. So I just cut it, lifted it back and I went and grabbed the camera. So here you go, over the shoulder, nastiness. Welcome back everybody. Does anybody remember before the cell phone in grammar school for me, there was the scratch and sniff sticker of like strawberry or banana. This cow skull right here would make the worst scratch and sniff sticker ever. The reason I sped this up is so you could see how much movement was going on. The amount of maggots that were in this bull's head was huge. Like I said, this bull was old. He went off and died. It took a couple weeks for them to find him. When they did, I got it and uh, surprise. So this is dealing with the deadhead. Rule number one is always get the hide off whatever you're working on and then you sort out the details later. Okay, here's the situation. I don't have a pot big enough for that longhorn, of course, because who does? Um, I was hoping it had rotted enough to where I could pop one of the horns off. I get one horn off, I got her whooped. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is gonna take a long time and it's gonna be a giant pain in the butt, but I'm gonna fill up this 20 gallon uh, tin tub with as much water as I can. I'm gonna bring it to a boil and that boiling water is gonna go in, the, in that uh, tub just gonna sit in there. I'm gonna fill another one, I'm gonna boil it, and I'm gonna keep it boiling. What I'm trying to do is give it just enough heat to where I can power wash off the base of the horn, and then I'm gonna build a rig where I can pry those horns in there and then start leveraging them to pop them off. If I get one horn off, I'm good, because then I can cut the horn core, fit the rest in the pot, but for right now, I'm just gonna boil some water. I'm working with a brand new boiler. I love this thing. I found it online, I ordered it, and it is the answer for me. Now this one's made by, um, I think it's called the Bayou Boiler. Yep, I'll put the link in the description. He makes his own orifices, he makes his own frames. It's stainless, it's mean and tough, and it's exactly what I need because I am boiling every single day and this is the answer. So I'll, uh, I'll film it, we'll fill it up, boil, dump, blah, blah, blah. This is me tapping out saying, forget it, that ain't working. I gotta get a pot big enough, plan B. Long story short, I ran down, grabbed a huge six foot by two by two water trough. I mounted it up underneath the bayou boiler. I gave it 130,000 BTUs for an hour and it got warm enough to pop one horn off. Holy cow, I was fired up. And like always, I took it over, gave it a good wash in and out. And on this one, I give it a big soapy bath because of all the stink. Next, I cut the horn core off. Check out this gnarly little end. It's crazy. Some of you may have seen this on Instagram. I share a lot of those quirky little pieces on the old iGram, as I say to the kids. Then I put it back in the boil, give the other side a smack with a hammer, and we're just about to start washing.
I cannot tell you how good it feels when those finally come off. I condense all of this down from like eight hours, and most of it is trying to get horns off. Oh my gosh, that exists in nature. Dingle, dangle, let's start washing. Next in the skull washing process, I've boiled that skull and I'm gonna hit it with the power washer. Now here's the rule. You want to spray into every hole and every orifice. Anywhere there's meat or tissue, make it go away. Let's spray. For me, there's nothing harder than an animal with a ton of age. The older the animal, the harder it is to remove the meat. That's just a rule. The only thing that makes it harder is when it's a deadhead, and the only thing that makes it worse than all of that is when it's an old deadhead. So I'm using a new power washer with a bunch of extra power. I'm just trying something new because I can. That's why you're seeing a lot of moisture and stuff come off of this. We'll see how it goes. I have removed the ear butts drilled using a one inch drill that whole auditory bull everything in the back of the head nice and clean and i'm gonna wash 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 and stick it in the color I'm boiling this skull now in a product called Aqua Silk. And you can buy it at a pool supply, you can buy it from Google. I can't find it on Amazon anymore. Either we blew it up or nobody wants to ship it. So this particular product is one gallon of this and three gallons of water. And I brought it to a boil and I'm letting it just simmer and percolate. What's happening? opening up the bone, that peroxide is whitening and sanitizing and degreasing all in one. So I'm going to do half of this skull like this, and then I'm going to put the rest in this big tin where we're boiling, and then do the backside, call it quits. As you can see, it got laid on me, so I'm using a light. But what I'm trying to do is just boil the front side, then the back side of that skull to get everything white and degreased. Once you've boiled in that peroxide mix, anything that's on that skull that was hard to get off is gonna slip right off. Whatever the peroxide does to meat and tissue, it ultimately destroys it and washes it clean. Skadoosh. Now all you gotta do is let it dry. The cow skull has dried with many, <laughs> many other skulls. I am running behind. I've taken on a tremendous amount of work and I can't quite keep up. No complaints, that's all on me. So our cow skull is dry. I tried to slide the horns on there. Um, actually, I slid the horns on there. They go on really nice. The face turned out real nice and white in the back from being a deadhead and jacked up in that soil is a bit uh, yellowish if you will and you can see there's a dark spot here um, there's nothing in there that I can tell but there's not much I can do because the skull itself has kind of got to a point where we have we've boiled in condition as far as we can but it is going to go on the wall so that's a good look I want to mop and glow everything right now 
So I gotta get these horns back off. I'll do that and I'll show you how to muffle go. I'm doing this in my garage, so it's not like I'm doing this on my actual carpet because I get stuff all over the floors. But with the Moffa Glow, I'm just kind of laying it into that bone, just getting it to make contact and soak in there. It dries super, super quick. 10 minutes, this thing will be done and dry. You've heard me say it before, but this kind of seals up that bone, makes it so the dust doesn't settle in there. If you've ever seen a skull on a shelf that maybe uh, got a little bit of oil that came out of it and the dust is on it, it just doesn't look real aesthetically pleasing on the wall. I just kind of get it in everywhere. I just change this moth and glow. I pour it in a cup and, and wipe it on all these horns and stuff. If you ever look in the bottom and start to get a little sediment, just dump it out and change your brushes because what's happening is you're picking up stuff from the horn that didn't come off and then you'll wipe that back into your skull. You'll see little particles in there. Wonder why you didn't clean well enough. I'm betting you did. You just coated it in dirty moth and glow. That's the reason I'm doing this skull first with fresh moth and glow before I do those horns. Just in case I missed anything in the wash. It's there. A lot of times too I'll take if I see it get foamy like that, that'll get shiny. I'll just give that a wipe. I don't like the I don't like when that mop and starts to foam. I get in there and start brushing around, it gets kind of foamy. Eye sockets real good, horns real good. They're styling. Okay, that's the skull. Now Horns and horn cores, the reason I cut those comes up all the time. More bugs and life happens in that horn core than anything. Plus, it's easier to put a horn back on with them cut. Uh, I save the horn cores. I take them to youth events. They just make for a great conversation piece. I think they look cool. I actually saw somebody at the, sh at the show who epoxied them and colored them and sold them. It's crazy to me, but... Um, I'm not just junking them, so I'm not just getting rid of them. I just keep them. Man, that mop and glow on horns is just amazing. All right, let's get these horns back on. Always, always, always dry fit them. Make sure you got the right size. They're, they're like a ring and pinion. They'll only go on one way. Alright, that's the easy one. So I'm going to put this one on first. Here's how I'm going to do it. Instead of using automotive bond the other day, I've just got this thing of clear epoxy gorilla, a gorilla epoxy. It's a two part thing. I got it open and I can't reseal it. So I'm just going to use this today. This stuff is, it's expensive, but it works really, 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 really well. So I'm just going to mix all this up. I'm going to use a little on each side, but ultimately when you get a horn that size, you're going to need a little more than just adhesive to hold it in there. So I'm going to give it a little, a little coat of this and then I'm, I'm going to put a, I'm going to actually put a, um, a screw in there. I'll show you. This acts as the membrane that was on the horn core, it'll just take out any slop or any of that stuff. I'm just going to put a screw.
All right, y'all. The big old deadhead longhorn is finished up. It looks beautiful. It's about a miserable task. If you remember earlier, I said there was kind of a oily looking part here. I'm thinking when that thing was in the pot like this, that's where that boiling oil was. And I essentially boiled oil in because it's the same on both sides, but that's it. <clears throat> it's beautiful. Go back to the landowner. Like always, thank you very much for watching. Till next time.